Hi, I'm Shauna Yao, CEO and Business and Personal Success Strategist at TotalGenius.net, where I help you discover your genius, which is a combination of your expertise and life experience, and build it into a profit-generating business where you then are able to live out your purpose. So uh, I was just on, and so if somebody can tell me if my sound is on, that would be great. Um, but it seemed like there was a sound issue. But today I wanted to talk about a subject that many people are struggling with. And that is uh, how to think about free and how to price your products and services. And then lastly, what your mindset has to do with this. So uh, I just did a video and I'm not sure if people can hear me. So can somebody tell me if you can hear me? Anybody? Just say I can hear you or something in the chat. Uh, I'm just going to continue talking until somebody actually tells me that. So uh, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Can somebody hear me? Anyway, I'm just going to start talking. So how people are thinking about free is that it is, um, you know, how people are teaching free is that you slap something together and then you put it on your website and you have a freebie opt-in. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is, uh, you know, people may sign up, but have you checked to see how many people are actually opening it? and reading it, listening to it, taking part in it. What ends up happening, especially for the people who are purposeful and intelligent, um, is that people, uh, y you are very purpose-driven and intelligent. And so when people are opting in and they are uh, not opening what you, what you have or you can't convert them into um, followers, uh, an audience that actually values you, and people that actually want to pay you. And so what ends up happening is that it brings on um, a fear response inside of you. And that's actually subconscious. Fear happens when you, uh, the change maker, intelligent person, looks at and sees that uh, your freebie opt-in, the good work that you put out there, um, is not getting views. Or you're getting views, but you're not actually getting clients. And so, when that happens, uh, it, there's a scarcity mindset that just subconsciously happens. And what people end up doing is overthinking and start self-sabotaging and thinking that it's probably something that you've done. And what that causes subconsciously is for you to go out and think that you need to offer more free. And that's what everyone is teaching. You know, go on Facebook Live, do a lot of free things, offer a lot of free. And people may be listening, watching, or maybe they're not. And the more that you do that, the more um, you don't feel good enough and the more it's just ineffective. And so I'd like to talk about the new economy of entrepreneurship is that people are going out there and they're teaching uh, and reteaching and reteaching what uh, marketing was taught years ago. Like in the days when Marie Forleo was just building her business and all of that, you know, freebie opt-ins were really effective because there weren't a lot of businesses out there. And when people did them, you know, they were able to, uh, to be seen and appreciated because it was something that was new. And now I've heard, I've heard people say, slap something together, put a checklist together, you know, just put that on your website. Just have something that people can sign up for free. And so, you know, just have something that, pe that, that anything on your website so you can get, build your list. It doesn't matter how many people are on your list, number one. Number two, um, putting 
something that's just not some things, you know, if it's not even related to your business or what it is that you sell, you're attracting people that don't appreciate that. And so I'd like for you to look at and see how many of those people have actually opened and read your freebie opt-in and then actually turned into um, valuable um, ideal clients. So what ends up happening then is that you start to feel um, just not like you're not, you don't have value and it's just an endless cycle. And so what I'd, I'd want, what I want to tell you is that, you know, as somebody who is a intelligent, purpose-driven person, uh, you know, Corrine, I hope I'm saying your name right, um, the, a funnel is actually uh, not the only thing that people need to know. So when people go and they teach funnels, you don't just have a system if it has something that's meaningless and valueless and then you don't know how to actually uh, move people to take a step closer to you. So I like to view a funnel as a feelings funnel. How people need to, to think about a funnel, a sales funnel, is actually that uh, you want people who uh, value you. So let me finish what I, I, I'm saying. Sorry, I kind of uh, broke my, my chain of thought. So when you go and you are, are giving away all this information for free and you don't have a solid marketing strategy and you're doing what people were teaching years ago, and I'm talking like, so if, if people are teaching, just have a freebie opt-in on there. Okay, have a sales funnel. And you don't have a solid strategy behind what that funnel is. And as a meaning maker and change maker, what I have found is that people that are more intelligent and purpose driven, and maybe you have like some offline experience or you have uh, created success in other areas of your life, when you go online and you start learning um, what other people are teaching, the very generic things that people are teaching, and you don't understand what, what marketing really is, it, it goes nowhere because people are teaching that you just put something low value in there and then go and teach things for free. So get on Facebook Live, you know, put out all this free content, write a blog post a week, send out emails, even if you don't have anything to say. And you know who else is doing that? Everyone. And so you end up blending into, blending into the environment and people can't actually um, hear you or see you. It's not that you're not good enough. It's that uh, you're not saying anything that's going to get their attention. So it doesn't mean that you don't have anything good to say. It means that uh, your focus is on the wrong thing. It's on the tactical things. You know, oh my God, I need to be in Snapchat. Snapchat. Oh no, you know, let me put out another blog post that, oh, what happened? That may not mean anything. And so this is about having a new understanding about what a solid marketing strategy for intelligent and purpose-driven people is. And so it's what it really is, is that when you do what everyone else is teaching, you're not speaking to people who value you. You're just speaking. And you're not speaking your purpose. And so um, what you really need to shift in is not, um, you know, getting our new social media channel. It's about understanding what it is that you teach and who is in a position to receive it. If people, if you're speaking just to a general audience and you're not directing what it is that you want to say to people who are in a position 
to hear you, then you're just putting information out into the ether. And as, as on the back side, you're just losing your self-confidence because, because those people that you're just speaking, you're speaking out into the ether and you don't have a strategy, they can't hear you. And they've signed up for a million different things. And they can't, am I, am I keep blinking in and out? I don't know why, but my, uh, my phone keeps blinking. So, you know, those people can't hear you. And so, um, when you can direct what you're saying to people who are in a position to receive it and you understand what it is that they need to hear, they suddenly start to see you and the people that then read your valuable content and consume and listen to your videos, those are people that are in a position to receive you. Those are people that want to learn from you. So people pay you in many different ways. They pay you with their attention. They pay you with their time. And then the people that need more help, they pay you with money. This is what it's, it's about. So um, as Kareen was just saying about, uh, it's all about a sales funnel. It's about a feelings funnel. You want your BBFs, your best business friends, your ideal clients to take a step closer to you, to get closer to you so that you can start sharing more and more with them. So you don't just offer free you need to understand what it is these people need to feel. And then you need to speak it. You need to boldly speak, speak it and stand out from the rest of the people. That's what a solid marketing strategy is. It's based on understanding what your strong message is and then understanding how to actually teach it and share it in a way that it hits the ears of people that are in a position to receive it. Then, before you go and you offer all these things for free, you need to look at what it is that you sell. Is what you sell valuable? I mean, I know if you value yourself and you understand what to value of yourself, then you're not selling some $10 item just to suck people in down your funnel. You're actually taking, excuse me, you're actually taking the true expertise and life experience and the things that are valuable of you because you view them as valuable and you're putting them into what it is that you sell and then you're pricing it accordingly. When you have that, then go and share your free. Share your free with a solid strategy of speaking to people that are in a position to receive it. And the people that need more help, those people will want to buy. So this is about a system. A system that gives you a purpose for waking up every day and doing your marketing. Your marketing is, has to have a specific focus. And it's not just important in, to the, in terms of your bank account. In actuality, it's important in terms of your head. Because when you don't appreciate your own value and you go out and you try to market your business you actually, uh, and, and it's not effective, you end up beating yourself up. And it's an endless cycle of then going and trying to, you know, being lured in by somebody who's selling something. You know, today someone in my group was talking about, you know, she, she bought like thousands and thousands of dollars with a business coaching. Because they were promising that she would make X amount of money. Well, there are no guarantees in life, number one. And number two, you know, if, if you have an urgent problem, a lot of people will go and try to take advantage of that. 
And, you know, I, I want to pr- try to prevent all of that from happening because it starts all in your head and then how you receive it and how you put it out there. So I hope that that's helped you understand free and then pricing. But then I'd like to talk about, you know, how you can infuse and understand value and then teach it. So I'm just going to share a couple experiences that I had of people uh, who I highly respected, respect still, and who were powerful and influential and had money and they were good people and they were two of my former bosses. And so, uh, you know, in my first job, uh, let's see, that was, wow, that was, that was 28 years ago. So in my first job, uh, I was the marketing director of a shopping center in Class A Office Tower in downtown LA. And, you know, it was the first, it, that was my first marketing director job that I had ever had. And I, uh, it was a shopping center, you know, I had like under, under a hundred, but you know, a lot of stores under me and a class A office tower, you know, like KPMG was in there and like all these big names. And so, you know, there I am, I think I was like 23 or something. And, uh, I was thrown into this high level position and it was downtown LA. So, you know, uh, my bosses and the people that uh, I was, I, I would report to, but I, I also was kind of, I would go to the meetings with them, um, were the VPs, and they were all men in suits, and you know, like, um, you know, in their 50s and 60s, and I just had the coolest boss, I had the coolest boss ever, and I would go to these meetings, and I would just be quiet, like, you know, these are like men that were in their 50s and 60s, and you know, they were all shooting the shit and like, you know, talking business. And uh, after like two meetings, my, my very cool boss pulled me aside and he's like, Shauna, you know, you didn't say anything. And, and I was like, I know, but you know, I, I didn't know what to say. Like, you know, everyone's talking and he goes, I need for you to speak. You're so... Uh, smart and you're very good and you know that shopping center, you know shopping center marketing or you know marketing and so I need for you to speak so that you can claim your position in the meeting. I was like, okay, I guess and I ended up speaking and I ended up speaking a lot. And in fact, I ended up being really respected and I became, you know, one of them. No, I didn't walk around in a suit and, you know, but, you know, they would tell like dirty jokes <laughs> in the meeting in front of me because I was just like, you know, I was just one of the cool people. They would ask me to out to drinks at, later, um, you know, to hang out with the other VPs. Uh, my boss that year gave me a huge bonus and a huge uh, jump in my pay. And I started to realize that, number one, I had a voice. And number two, people see you differently when you actually um, use it and you share what's inside of you. They view you uh, differently and they appreciate you differently. And you appreciate yourself differently. So that at the next job I had, I gave myself a $10,000 bonus. And, and they asked me how much I wanted, uh, how much I was, you know, what they needed to hire me at. I gave myself a $10,000 raise and I got it. And as my career grew, that's how I got raises. When I would go to the next job, I would increase my value because I became more experienced. And so how you see yourself not only affects how you see yourself, but it affects how... Uh, how other people see you and then treat you. So at one of my other jobs, uh, this is very interesting, is that, so this man was like an immigrant from Armenia and he came from nothing, like literally like came on a boat and worked his way up to uh, to, earn, to, um, to own 
a chain of leather stores. He owned a chain of leather stores, lived in a multi-million dollar home in, uh, uh, in the Hollywood Hills, and drove his Mercedes, Jaguar, whatever it was that year. He was a very wealthy man. And, uh, you know, he was, he was not, you know, my favorite boss, but I did learn something from him. So um, one day, this was, the, this was way before uh, my, my whole uh, elevate, elevation of my mind, um, but, you know, he was a very wealthy man. So one day we were at South Coast Plaza, which is one of the higher-end shopping centers in uh, Los Angeles, and he took me and my, uh, my, my boss, who was like this young girl who was like 24, she looked like a model, a very uh, intelligent and savvy, and she drove like a BMW 750 or something. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Um, so he took us out to lunch at this, at this mall. We were considering opening a store. And he took us to lunch at uh, Armani. I, I don't know. It was Ar some, you know, Armani had like a, a, has a place where they eat. And so um, he took us there and, you know, I'm so like from Indiana and, uh, you know, I'm just a regular person and it was a very high class place. And so we sat down and he, and, you know, people are serving us and he's like, um, uh, is everything look okay to you, Shauna? You know, uh, how's the menu look? And, you know, I'm like, uh, I said, oh, you know, it's fine. Um, and he was like, no, what's wrong? And I said, oh, you know, there's nothing vegetarian on here. You know, I think it, they had like chicken. And stuff. I said, no, but it's fine. It's totally fine. Like, I didn't, I didn't know what to say. You know, there's me. I, I think I was like 20, I don't know. This is actually before my, um, my shopping center one. So, I don't know. I was like just out of college. And so, um, he was like, no, you need, to, you need to speak up. What do you really want? And I was like, oh, you know, just a salad without this and without this, without this. And, and so, when the waiter came to the table, he was like, and she would like, and he named off everything. And I was like, wow, you know, thank you. And uh, he said, Shauna, I'm going to teach you a very important lesson. He said, when you have something that, that you want to say, and when uh, you are in a position to, uh, to have it fulfilled, you actually need to speak it. He said, not that, you know, you need to speak it so that, so that they'll bring it to you. And he goes, not that, you know, the waiter needs to serve you. You know, that, that's his job. But so that they'll remember you. So that, you know, even if you don't have anything to change in the menu, you should make up something. Because that's what they're going to remember. And I thought that was a, like one of the most powerful lessons I've ever learned. Not, and it has to do with more than just what, what you're eating or where you're going to, um, to a restaurant for. It actually has to do with... Um, Understanding what people want to hear from you, who needs to hear it, what your voice is, and how you need to speak it in order to get what you want. Again, not so that you think that you're above this waiter or you, know, you think that you're above your audience or your ideal client or anything like that. But when you understand that your needs are just as important as everyone else's and that when you speak it, the right people will hear it and they will be moved to, you know. So in terms of this restaurant, he was a waiter. He was being paid to bring us what we wanted. And we had the opportunity to then pay him back with money. You know, in actuality, waiters want you to do that so that you can reward them with a tip. Your audience and your clients, I, I heard Joe Polish say this once, is that people are just begging. Oh, no, I know. It was, uh, it was someone else. People are just begging to be led. 
not because you don't know what you're doing or, you know, oh, I need it, you know, someone. That's just the human condition. You know, we all live in the, the story of Aristotle where we are the hero. You, me, the guy down the street, we're the hero of our story, of our own story. And we're all looking for that guide. No, you're not looking for a coach. You're not looking for that. We're looking for, you know, our truth, which is really our guide. We're looking for somebody to lead us. That just is the human condition. We're not consciously, you know, going, I need my guide. No, we're looking for um, our truth. We're looking for, you know, what's the right, next right thing to do? And if you're looking for a coach, you know, whether it's your health, your business, whatever like that, you're looking for a guide. And it's until you can realize that you are not the hero, you're the guide. And just like what my boss taught me, if you don't speak it and, and ask for what you want and state it and know that it's important, nobody is going to buy from you. No one's going to want to learn from you. And the right people aren't going to hear you. The right people are people that are in a position to hear you. They're in a position to receive what it is that you have. And those people that are in a position to, to hear it, value it. So will all your people that you speak to uh, want to pay you money? Is that how you should look at them? Do they have a dollar bill on their head? No. The people that, that need to hear it, they're in a position to, to receive it, are people that value you. And they pay you, just as I said, with their time. They pay you by actually learning and doing the things that you say. And then the ones that need it, need the actual help, those are people that are in a position to buy from you. So today, you know, I have the seven-day challenge, Positioned to Sell. You can sign up at positioned.totalgenius.net. It's a free challenge to help you get positioned to sell. And yesterday, I spent, you know, like 20 minutes deleting people. I deleted people who weren't in a position to receive it. They had signed up. Chances are they've signed up for multiple things that are free. In fact, I know because they've signed up for multiple things of mine that are free. And again, you know, many of them had not completed that either. They weren't in a position. It's not that they aren't valuable. It's not that they didn't want to learn. They aren't in a position uh, to receive it which is fine. You know, some email me back and they had like time constraints and, you know, family issues and things like that. And that's totally fine. I'm, you know, I know my value and I'm not in a position in my mind to just put information out there. I don't want to land in somebody's email box and just be an unopened email. I value my time, my work that I put into my work, and the work that people are doing. And so it's not fair, not only to me, but to the people that are actually doing the work. If my stuff is being shared with people who are not in a position to receive it. So I want you to look at your business. Are people in a position to receive what it is that you're teaching for free, sharing for free, um, you know, what your freebie opt-in is, are they in a position to want to learn from you and those that need it buy from you? Because if they're not, I'd like to challenge you to think about deleting them. Because in the end, you know, they're not in a position right now. They can re-sign up. And then you can put more of your value into who it is that, that is in that position. But again, it all relates to, you know, what it is that you're actually selling. So just like I was saying, go and look at what you're actually charging for. Is your full value in, them, in that? Because if it's not, 
then uh, you aren't charging what you're worth. So it doesn't even matter if you're speaking to people who can receive that information. Um, you're still not charging what and and selling something that is of your true value. You can go and you can teach things for free all day long. As long as you have something that solves an urgent problem, that is priced that in, a, in such a way, and you have a strategy behind why it's priced that way, that will then support you. Because if you are unsupported financially and mentally, you're not going to be able to speak to people that need you. It's a, it's a system. I keep saying that. Like it's a whole system from the way that you think about it, the way that you think about yourself, the way you think about your business, the stuff that you put into your program, the effort that you put out there, the things that you do for free, and the things that you know you charge for. It's a system, and it all has to work in concert, and that's a solid marketing strategy. So, you know, I hope that that's helped you really understand that it's so important for you to stand in your value every day. And you stand in that value by understanding your positioning, not just in your business, but in your life and in your mind. So I, the last thing I'm going to address is, you know, I said that um, free and pricing it, it, and your income has little to do with your mindset. Because it has little to do with your mindset. What it actually has to do with is your understanding of your value. When you understand your value, you're okay with giving stuff away for free. Because you understand that your value will always be there. You can have a bad day and you still have your value when you understand what it is. You can um, you could be totally broke right now. And you still have your value, so you know you can earn money. You could have people like, you know, giving you hate messages. And you still have your value, so you know you're a good person. When you understand your value, you understand. It's not about some mindset, I will make money, I will make money. It's not about that. It's about having a solid conviction in yourself where you wake up every day and you say, I'm going to be okay. You know, and then you know how you share it. That's what it's all about. So I hope that that's helped you. Um, I have to get to a consultation in a second. But I hope that you guys can hear me because you couldn't hear me before. And my phone keeps blinking out. Um, if someone can just tell me if they can hear me, if you guys are still on, that would be great. If not, that's okay too. <laughs> um, but it looks like there's people on. So I hope you can because this was a very valuable episode. I invite you to share this with anyone. Sign up for my free, uh, uh, my free um, teleclass, which is coming at on August 11th at positioned.totalgenius.net. And I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.